Uh, Vinny, you don't mind starting with you, and um, everyone probably recognizes off the telly. You seem to like Danny Farrell. Can you give us a bit of insight into what you, what you do during the games? I think during the games is, is you're just trying to reconfirm or, or spot something that maybe you thought was going to happen during the week and making sure it is happening or something that obviously it's tricky for the coaches with their own areas so it's trying to be a little bit deta detached from um, the kind of the, the, the bits that they're responsible and trying to give them something that maybe they're not seeing so the wingers change position late or and um, even then the small things like a starting lineup change and obviously they're just coming in and we'll warm up and um, so there's always that like period of the first five or ten minutes where you're trying to figure out where they set up the way maybe you were hoping that they would be or and uh, you're not going to touch that. Sorry. Excuse me. And uh, yeah, set up the way that we thought they were going to be so. And then during the week, like how much is there a team of analysts? How much goes into actually the day to day stuff? So we've, we've three with us here, myself, John Buckley, Al Walsh, and then we've got two, two data guys back in Dublin and that are just working on, and they've been working on the route all the way, and they have to be all the way to a final, so and that's their, they're nicely detached from this, and then as we progress, we lean into their work more, take it on, and then put it into, into practice straight out, and so we're not getting caught up with that ourselves. See you again. Actually, I'll say what you did again, and then I'll pass on to Colin. So, when you're coming up against, uh, you know, you worked with Joe Schmidt, when you're coming up against his kind of analytical mind, is there almost like a kind of off What's that like when you come up against uh, his kind of analytical mind? I think the one thing in that is like that they, they're all, they've all got analytical minds. I think maybe his was probably the one that was spoken about the most, but if you look at, say, Faz's approach, you look at Simon used to be the detail that they've gone into with the line -out. Any coach who gets to this level, I think, has to have a mind that is significantly um, analytical. And, and Joe's detail is, is well spoken about, but, but maybe doesn't get the same amount of, of, of press as the, the amount of thought that, that Faz was before uh, Paulie, Simon, Caddy, and Fogs go into. You know, you're talking about Fogs is like moving six inches left in a scroll or something like that. And I think that's where. Um, where Joe was going to be in a reputation built around it, but anything that he would have come up with or that he, that he would have been, um, kind of led in Irish rugby, obviously the, the remnants are still there and um, we, we've all benefited from that and in the same way that somebody like Felix leaves the Irish system and goes to Africa, so that's just the natural way it goes and, and when a coach leaves they take stuff with them and they leave stuff behind. So. Uh, Connor, from your previous World Cup experience, are you as primed as you've ever been to finally get into that World Cup semi final? Um, yeah, I suppose, yeah, is, yeah, is the short answer. Um, we've talked about, and people have talked about what we've done over the last number of years, and I suppose the level of performance that we've we've been able to achieve and, and, the, and the, the big wins and, and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, is the short answer. It, it gives us massive belief in, in terms of the ability we have in the squad and, and what we can do and on, on the other side is you know there's, there's enough of us in the room that have you know been through these quarterfinals and know how tough they are to win and it all comes down to on the day so um, yeah like we've we've done good things over the, over the past few years there's probably a bit more built up behind us in terms of, of what we've done um, so yeah like this is you know we feel in a good space uh, in terms of what we can deliver you know like Vinny was saying, you don't really know what's going to come with the old legs. You, you have an idea, but you know, with, with Joe and, and, and people like that behind the scenes, we've, we've got to be ready for things that we might not expect. So, um, yeah, I suppose we, we're, we're in a good place. It, it, it's, yeah, it's as good as a position as we've ever been in, but saying that we know, we know how tough it's going to be. Hi, lads. Uh, Connor, just one for you. I was asking the players uh, about the Irish fans and the influence that they're having. Um, other nations are now speaking about the fans and saying, you know, it's incredible to see them and the effect they're having. For you, is this the best experience of Irish fans that you've ever felt? Yeah, hands down. I, I was chatting to Scotland's Chris Harris after the game, and he was saying, like, you know, you, your fans are out there a thing now. People, people are talking about them, and they certainly are. Um, you know. We stay outside of Paris a little bit, and you know, getting the bus into the stadium on match day is um, is fine thing. Like you know, I mean, a lot of us have been around a while and have played in big stadiums and big occasions, but this is definitely another level. Um, the songs they're starting to sing that have kind of taken over, um, you know, 
to get to that stage, you know, at the end of the game with a win is, is certainly a little, a little part of motivation to, you know, to hear that again and, and you know, give those, give those fans who, you know, got deep into their pockets to keep turning up um, week in week, week in week out, and um, yeah, they deserve something, something special, and, and they definitely give us a lift. You know, it feels, it, it nearly feels like a home game in that, in that stadium at the moment. When you mention the songs, do you like hearing Zombie? Yeah, as a Limerick man, it's. Uh, I haven't been to a few hurling games, it's, it's one, we, one we get behind. Bundy thinks they're singing Bundy, Bundy. Uh, uh, they're definitely not. Connor, you've obviously played with Johnny for a very long time. He seems to be really enjoying this World Cup on the pitch. You see him kind of engaging with the crowd a lot and kind of soaking up the atmosphere. Can you just tell us a little bit what he's been like behind the scenes and have you noticed anything different about him compared to a couple of seasons ago? Nightmare. Yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. I think um, I suppose firstly, Johnny's playing unbelievable rugby. I think that's you know any any player when when they're playing well, they tend to be in better moods around the place. And you know, Johnny, obviously an unbelievable leader of the team, um, but expects really high standards of himself. And I think he's you know whatever age he is, he's, he's playing some of the best rugby of his life. And, um, he kind of reflects the, the mood of the camp. Like, I don't know how many times I've said it in media, how enjoyable it is in, in the environment that we've created in Faz and, and everyone um, down from there has created. So he's he's just another player that's, that's loving life at the moment. And I've seen Faz said it's, you know, right now that this is living. And, you know, we're, we're in a, an extremely privileged position. You know, you talk about the fans coming over and, you know, they're, they're over to support us. and. Um, it's a truly special place to be, um, and you know that's again part of the motivation to, to keep this thing going. Connor, uh, the All Blacks have spoken about them being a totally different team compared to last summer. Um, does that work both ways, and can you give us any insight into why Ireland have evolved since you last faced them? Yeah, I think every every team tries to evolve, tries to improve game on game, year on year, and. Um, the All Blacks are no different. Um, you know what what happened in the summer was incredible. It was, it was a really special tour, really special series win. Um, you know, but we, we've the way Vinny and all the lads have analysed them, and, and we've we've seen a lot of it too. They've they've definitely improved. You know, they've 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 grown their game. They've learned from definitely that that series. And you know, if you stand still as a team in, in the modern era, you're, you're going to get left behind. So both teams have have developed. Um, I played against the All Blacks where we've beaten them and we played them a week later and they're a completely different animal. Um, so if you want, if you look at it that way, I suppose, will there be a reaction from the summer? Like people, I've heard people talk about that. Use of his motivation, I'm sure they will be. And then they'll be coming out with a, a point to prove and um, sure World Cups, they're historically an unbelievable side. So, um, you know, we gotta be got to be ready for the best version of, of them on, on the weekend. Connor, experience is obviously important, but there's loads of guys in even in the 23 this weekend who weren't there in 2019. How important have they been to, to driving this whole thing on? There's a fearlessness maybe to, to a lot of them. Yeah, I think you said a fearlessness. There's something about those guys like Mac or even like Jimmy coming in on the bench. There's um, there's no issue that you know there's there's complete confidence in Jimmy uh, and, and these kind of guys. Like you said, they've. They haven't. They weren't there in 2019. You know, that was a that was a tough World Cup for all of us, and you know we had to dust ourselves off and, and kind of get rid of that scar tissue and move on. Whereas these guys have come in, they've come into a really good environment, and, and I suppose you know winning more often than not is, is something they're used to. So you know you would think, I know I'm not talking about Jimmy coming in on the bench. It's a, it's a huge game, but he's used to it. He's delivered for us in, in the past and in, in, the, in the limited number of caps he's, he's had. So. I think that for us, anyway, for me, and as I'm sure the more experienced lads would agree, you know, those lads coming into the environment, they've added a freshness, a fearlessness is the word I'd, I'd, I'd use again, that, you know, drives us on to, to kind of, you know, chase success and, and, and expect to win. Boys, quick question for each of you. Um, uh, firstly, Connor, um, if you snuck into the All Black camp and you're in their team meeting, what do you think they'd be saying about this Irish team? I don't know what Joe would be saying about us. Um, yeah, traditionally, I suppose the All Blacks, you know, 
they really focus on themselves um, and, and, and what they can do and um, the standards they hold themselves to. But if, I suppose if you were to think about it, uh, what we'd like is, and we, I would assume there's a bit of respect there now, you know, over, over the last number of years we've, we've had great tussles with them. You know, when I started off in my international career playing against New Zealand was was really daunting as, and it still is. Um, but, you know, did we really expect to beat them? Um, is questionable and whereas now there's definitely a bit more belief with, with the understanding of, of how good they are and how hard it is going to be to beat them but um, you know there's definitely there's definitely a respect there on, on both sides. say like missed tackles against teams is obviously so important but and, and it flashes up on TV but very often when you look at a missed tackle stat it can be a very positive thing and I think teams that defend with a lot of line speed will miss more tackles and I think if you get off the line which New Zealand do very well in their defence you will miss tackles but you'll wrap them up and soak them up on the other side of it so I think sometimes people get hooked into a, a negative on, on the missed tackle stat, but actually a lot of the teams in the world now that are missing more tackles are conceding less points. And I think that's something that's been a, a change because teams are coming off the line so hard and forcing teams back inside. Connor, what would it mean for you, the group and the nation with all the momentum building behind Ireland at the moment to reach your first ever World Cup semi-final? Yeah, it would mean everything. Um, on the outside, it's obviously a talking point that we've never got there. Um, within the group, you know, we think this is a different team and, you know, the capabilities are, are, are different. But, yeah, to, to get to that point would be, um, would be everything. Like, this weekend is the biggest game I've ever played and, uh, and it's the same for everyone in, in the group. So, that alone, to, to get through that would be... Um, a huge, huge moment, a, a huge milestone. You know, breaking a quarter final isn't something we, we talk about. You know, where it's cliche, but game, game on game, I'm focusing on the next moment. But yeah, like the opportunity, and you know, with the group we have, such a special group, it's it's something we're chasing, something we absolutely love to do for ourselves and, and for the fans that are here and, and at home. But um, you know, I can't get away from you know how hard it's going to be, how difficult a task it is, but. Um, yeah, it would mean, mean the world to, to all of us to, to get to that next stage. Okay, last two questions, Ollie, then Tommy. Connor, you've got three Kiwis in your squad. Can you give us an idea of how they've been this week and the sort of motivation they hold to hopefully knock the All Blacks out of the World Cup? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's a turn. Bondi, sorry, yeah. Samoan, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Samoan, yeah. Huh? yeah. Um, yeah, the, like those three boys, um, so important to our squad, and I suppose what they did, you know, taking the chance to come over here and, and start a new life for themselves and, um, and prove themselves, and uh, all three of them have really done so. And, you know, they're three world class players who, who we're going to rely on heavily and have. Have performed unbelievably well in, in this in this competition. Particularly Bundy, I hate saying it, but he's been playing the, the rugby of his life, and um, you know he can come across as a bit of a messer, you know, a bit of a jolly fellow. But like behind the scenes, Bundy's incredible. You know the, the level of detail. I'm sure Vinny will agree. He's he's always on the computers and always trying to figure things out. So um, it's actually a smart fellow, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, the, it hasn't really been mentioned, you know, the, the New Zealand thing, you know, they're, they're, they're part of our Irish team now, they're, they're really important to us and I'm sure, you know, there's a part of them that, you know, they're a little bit extra that they want to get one over on, on their, uh, their place of birth, but yeah, they're fully, fully part of our Irish right now. Thanks, last question. Just a quick one for, for each of you, um, Vinny, I've always wondered what it's like in the box and is there much shouting and roaring, is it a kind of a tense place? I suppose it depends on the game, but you know, what's it like in the middle of all that and, and, and the various coaches around you? Yeah, I think it's, it's actually really, believe it or not, it's quite calm. Um, the, the, 
the only problem is that Francis is just so noisy the last couple of weeks with Irish fans, <laughs> so it's impossible to hear each other. So we're all kind of mic'd up and, and in one channel because it's uh, it's totally different than we've experienced before. Wearing like aviation headsets to try and knock out the noise and hear the messages from the touchline. And um, so for us, yeah, it's, it's it's incredibly calm, but it's just very very noisy. Very noisy and fast, it's unbelievably calm during the game. Celebrates the wins and then just sits back down and uh, yeah, he gets, just gets himself reset. And I love the authenticity that is, he, he just loves a big moment in the game, the same way as, as he was with a player. As a player, and um, he just fully immerses himself in a, in a try or something that we've done, and then just sits back down beside me and says, "Can you show me the last line?" Out? And it's totally casual. Connor, just to have asked him to you then, you, you're around long enough to play against the great New Zealand teams uh, when they were world champions. Is it fair to say the All Blacks are not as good as they used to be? No, no, I don't think so. I won't fall into that trap, I think. I've been uh, around long enough to know how, how good they are um, and how, you know, how they, how they can hurt after a defeat or, or, you know, people are criticising them. I know, I know at home in New Zealand, you know, their media is quite heavy on them and, and expect high standards. So, um, you know, I, I know a lot of their players have played, a lot of, uh, played against a lot of their players for a long time and, you know, how, how good they are. You know, there's so many world-class players with, with such ability. So, um, no, the, the threat and the, the aura around the All Blacks is, is definitely still there. So, um, you know, that's, that's the challenge. Nice try. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Hunter. Thanks, Lee.